Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the November 2022 meeting of the West Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency. Um, as usual, pursuant to Government Code Section 54953 is amended by Assembly Bill 361, and due to the state of emergency de declared by the governor on March 4, 2020, members of the West Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency and staff will participate in this meeting via teleconference and, and Zoom to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Those members of the public who wish to do so participate in the Zoom meeting by either uh, by phone or by uh, the streaming that was, uh, which information was provided uh, with the agenda. So at this point, I would ask the clerk to call the roll. Chair Rima. Here. Vice Alcala. Here. Director Ledesma. Here. All are present, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on to our agenda. Uh, our first item is 1A. It's presentation by the public on matters not on the agenda. And uh, do we have any uh, written or earlier comments or anyone uh, streaming that would like to make comments at this point? There are no comments received from the public beforehand, and I invite anyone to speak now regarding any matters not on the agenda. Okay, not hearing anyone. We'll go, we'll move forward to item 1B, report out on closed session. Council. Yes, hi, this is Tracy Hunkler, and uh, the board met in closed session on the two items listed on the agenda and uh, no reportable uh, actions were taken at that meeting. Okay, thank you. Item 1C, monthly and year-to-date revenue and expense report. Good morning, board members and staff. I will be reporting out on the revenue and expenditures for the month of September, 2022. In our O&M fund 870, <clears throat> the balance started at approximately 3.89 million. There's no revenue and expenditures totaled 15,000, making the ending position at 3.87 million. In our CIP fund 871, the beginning, the beginning balance was 5.69 million. The agency received 1.54 million in revenue. 1.49 million of that was from quarters 43 and 44 true up with the state. And about 45,000 was from the time oil settlement. That was the second check that I previously spoke about earlier on. Expenditures totaled 257,000, making Fund 871's ending position at 6.98 million. At the end of the month, the combined cash position was 10.85 million. And as of November 7th of this year, the cash position was at 10.59 million. So um, closing entries for fiscal 21-22 are complete. Um, so that's the reason why the beginning balance numbers didn't match last month's ending balance. So if you look at that, it's just a slight tweak. Fund 257 earned 211 in interest. However, that fund will be swept into 871 soon, and it will be closed out. Um, that concludes my report. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Hearing, hearing none, we'll thank you, Chen. Um, move on to our consent agenda, which consists of the uh, the COVID uh, resolution to meet by uh, a Zoom, and then also consideration of approval of the October 20, 2022 meeting minutes. Hearing uh, would um, I will make a motion to. Uh, I was about to do that, but okay. The, the <laughs> consent agenda as presented. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded uh, to move the uh, consent agenda. Would the uh, clerk please call the roll? Director Ledesma? Aye. Vice Chair Alcala? Aye. Chair Ramos? Aye. Aye, have it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item four um, a presentation on the Southport Levy. Recreation Trail Project. I believe we have some people from the City Park and Recreations that are going to 
tell us what's going on. Morning, Chair Ramos, uh, Tracy Michael, the Parks Director, and um, Jay Pai from uh, Capital Improvement Projects is going to give you a presentation today about the what's happening at the Southport Levy and what are some future improvements that are planned. Take it away. Thank you. And let me quickly sh share my screen here and we can get started. So I'm Jay Chahal, and I am the Construction and Facilities Development Manager for the City of West Sacramento. And alongside me today, I have Tracy Michael, the Parks and Recreation Director. And today we'd like to take a moment to just go over the 35% plans of the Southport Levy Recreation Trail and um, get some feedback on it. So the purpose of this meeting right now is to get feedback on, on the Southport, Le Southport Levy Recreation Trail. I'll start off with getting some background information on the project, the work done to date, and uh, present the design concepts that we have right now, and then go over some trail access opportunities for future trail improvement, and then next steps and kind of open it up for discussion and feedback. So kind of going over the planning and history of this trail. Um, it is located on the Southport Setback Levee, and is, it's right over 5.3 miles of paved trail that's being proposed on top of the, Le the Crown Rule Levee. This started back in 2016, and then was also uh, well, where it was included into the general plan. And then in 2018, it was included into the bike ped and trails master plan. And in 2019, um, it was a park and recreation and open space master plan. In between that, um, the city did do a contract with HDR to do a uh, recreation trail report, which identified this as a uh, future amenity. During that time, we were also able to, uh, able to secure uh, $395,000 from Delta Conservancy. And in, in, in that, there was $50,000 of match funding that we also had um, contributed from the city side. Since that um, time, we have contracted with Mark Thomas to perform design concepts and, and design of the um, entire trail that we're proposing today. In 2019, the city did secure $1.8 million for the, and that's proposed for the construction of the trail itself. And kind of going over the design schedule, um, the community engagement is supposed to be wrapped up um, by the grant by August of 2022, and that was done. The environmental clearance is August of 23, and uh, construction documents, this is 100% design, um, is uh, November of 2023. And then permitting is supposed to, is what should be wrapped up by that time as well. So the work done to date, um, currently there has been there has been three stakeholder meetings from April 2022 till about July of 2026. And in these meetings, the public was there, um, and we kind of wanted to go over the grant requirements, the existing conditions out, out on the levy the opportunities and constraints that we're up against, and some of the trail alignment options. That was all included in, in, into stakeholders meetings one and two. And stakeholder meeting number three, we wanted to really hone in on getting the, um, developing the guiding principles, the, prefer, the preferred trail alignments features, and kind of theming of what we were going what I will be showing you today, and some of the offsite opportunities as well. In August, we did take this, um, we presented a workshop to the Parks, Recreation, and Intergenerational Commission on the current plan that we had, the current concepts, and um, went over trail theming. Since then, we have now received the 35% plans on the trail, and we're moving forward um, with, with construction documents. 
And to get an overview of where the trail is located and all of the points where it kind of intersects is right here. So it's 5.3 miles and it starts right at Stonelock facility and goes all the way almost to city limits. And, it, and what's highlighted there is the Park Creek Branch Line Trail. That is not a paved trail and that's not part of the scope of this project. But to highlight it in here, this entire loop creates almost over 10 miles of trail and recreation opportunities for the city. Also on here, um, alongside here, there's a current project happening right at Linden Road, and that is our, our, our only trailhead that's going to be for this for this trail and that is under construction or, or right now. And the highlighted blue sections on this map are current um, current residents and and uh, that are affected by um, this trail. Also highlighted is Bees Lakes. Um, that is a and Chicory Loop, that is the only crossing that this trail will have um, with, with the roadway. And then Bees Lakes, um, highlighting that in here for future uh, improvements that's going to happen there as well. And while we were going over alternatives, there was um, the Crown of the Levee is right around uh, 20 feet, but the usable space that we have that we came up with for this trail would be an eight foot trail. Um, that is paved and with two foot, two feet of aggregate base on each side and it's right on the crown of the levee. During design, um, we did go through different reiterations of meandering the trail and creating uh, more amenities on top of the trail. However, due to the nature of where it is and, and keeping in consideration maintenance and also access for in case of an emergency on the top of the levee, it was just, the design was um, just to have a straight paved trail with very minimal um, amenities onto the side that I'll get into here in a little while. So to kind of go over some of the comparison alternatives that we had when we first initially um, were going through design concepts. So the first two in the, Two alternatives um, that were presented had more amenities on the trail and the cost was significantly um, more than what we had in our budget as well. Um, due to the nature of this being on top of the levee and having uh, access and being able to um, maintain the levee and also all the regulatory agencies that we'll have to um, go through, the eight foot trail was um, what we, what we decided on um, keeping. And the reason for that as well is uh, eight feet is class one uh, bike trail, is Caltrans, is, is how Caltrans defines that. And um, that's the minimum. And for this size of a project, adding you know two feet onto it um, would, would bring costs significantly higher. So the alternative that was picked was alternative three. Um, and the reason for that mostly was for, you know, aligning the trail in the middle of the levee to keep access points, maintenance, as I mentioned, and utilizing only the existing um, roads that are out there. And it says bump outs, but that's not adding any more fill on the levee or any kind of creation of those. That's just utilizing what's already out there. Uh, we ran through a few iterations of that, and it was decided that through permitting, um, through Army Corps, et cetera, like flood, uh, and um, through maintenance, it would not be feasible to, to add on top of the levee that's just been reconstructed. Also, this trail sits on top of the levee um, and utilizes the existing base that's there and building on top of that, um, it does not penetrate into the, any of the prism or any of that, uh, any of the levee system. The amenities are only um, placed as space allows and respecting that the, the the areas that are considered bump outs on there are um, reserved for turning radius for vehicles on top of the levee. And then amenity, the only amenities that will be on there is just kind of some seating, um, which I'll go over here and show some examples in a minute, and wayfinding and interpretive signage. This was defined in the grant uh, agreement, so we do have to apply um, seating, wayfinding, and interpretive signage in, in, in this area. However, any of the signage or any of anything that's added on top of the levee 
Uh, it'll be sleeved so it can be removed in case of the levies for emergency purposes. This alternative does have the fewest amenities, but due to our constraints, we were able to um, weren't able to have all the amenities on top of the trail. We have proposed additional areas where amenities will occur. Right now, the only trailhead that is the, um, being constructed is the one on Linden Road, but I'll go over some uh, additional areas here in a minute. So going over the design criteria, the trail will be open uh, from dawn to dusk, and mobility devices um, will be under 100 pounds. The access to the top of this um, trail will be from those two, those three points that I mentioned, from Stone Lot, the Clarksburg Branch Line Trail, and then um, the only trail hub that's on there in the middle, which is Linden Road. Um, and that is equestrian use will not be on the trail, but at the trailhead at Linden, um, there is an opportunity there um, that the offsite off of the levee, they will be a, a question, there'll be an opportunity for equestrians to utilize um, some of the access roads there. So the bump outs, they're just like I mentioned, they're only utilizing the existing crown of the uh, levee due to permitting challenges. And just to quickly go over this, um, the aggregate cap is 14 inches thick. 12 to 14 feet wide. We're only using eight feet of that, and then two foot aggregate shoulders. And some of the amenities, um, while we're placing benches or trying to figure out how to do signage and tr trying to figure out all the ways to incorporate everything that's in the grant uh, agreement, we had to go over, make sure nothing was penetrating the levy prism. Um, Service gates, those will be modified for ADA access. And then uh, lighting for safety purposes, this only occurs at uh, road crossings, intersections at trailheads. So there's no lighting on top of the levee um, that just could not be done in this area. And the footings would be going into the prism. So this was not an option uh, for us right now in this project. And public art is limited to 1% on this project. And um, one of the areas that we have identified for public art in this project um, is at the start of the trail at, at, uh, and at the crossing um, the intersection, I should say, at Clarksburg Branch Line Trail. So, kind of, oops. Sorry. So going over the trail um, in itself, you can see here the, the access point. So Village Parkway, Stone Gate, that's one right there. And that is paved. Um, the old South River Road is existing pavement um, that is there. So we're utilizing that and that ties right into the top of the Crown of the Levee. There's these rest stops that are mentioned on here. These are the existing uh, areas where the trail, I mean, where the top Crown of the Levee is wider and we were able to utilize that and put a bench and some interpretive signage on there. And it, it's also identified, and those are spaced about a quarter mile um, apart. And this shows the trail, um, the pavement is on here. Uh, it, the way it's displayed is, that is, you know, kind of in, in set in the levee, but it's not, it's actually, it's, it'll be built up. It will, will not be um, penetrating the prism at any point, but just kind of just to show a uh, typical trail section. And the access gates that are, I mentioned being um, being modified, but chicory loop here, we do have an opportunity. Um, and we, this is, this is where um, the trail does cross a road. So um, offering high vis, high vis uh, crosswalk here and opening up these gates wide enough so, pe um, so people can get in and out, but um, ATVs or any of that, uh, those vehicles would not be able to get in there. That's where right where it says South Park um, Trail, right at the bottom left of the screen right here, that's where a little bit of modification is gonna be needed onto these gates. 
um, to allow for access. And this also opens opportunity to add the seating. So this, as I mentioned, so just a bench here and keeping it very simple um, and in, in kind of enhancing the pavement here. So it, it's um, visible for people. And to go over the trail theming that was chosen. So it's kind of the trail theming is river locks and it's very simple um, benches with gabion baskets and kind of utilizing the nature, uh, nature approach. And right here, um, we do have an opportunity. So this, this communication tower was decommissioned, the art on it, and um, that is in the possession of the city right now. And this fish right here that is uh, displayed here, that's kind of what we're proposing uh, possibly as in utilizing that art in the, in the areas that I mentioned at, uh, at the uh, Clarksburg Grand Line Trail uh, intersection and at the uh, Stonelock. Village Parkway area. So for the, um, I wanted to go over some of the access opportunities. Um, and on here, it'll show interim uh, improvements. That's kind of what we're doing right now. And then ultimate improvements are future, uh, future not included in this project, but I wanted to bring it, wanted to bring it to the, the board's attention that you know we are thinking of these uh, future amenities to be included in these areas. So this is right here at, at this is right here at the intersection of the Clarksburg Branch Line Trail, and um, right before that, this it comes into a triangle area, and this is an area that's right now just going to be an at grade uh, connection to the Branch Line Trail, which is not paved. Um, so and bringing some improvements to this area uh, would the ultimate improvements here would be more of a, a parking lot and that's right at the end of this uh, cul-de-sac here and and uh, maybe a picnic area some benches some trash and some signage and davis road um, this is a remnant parcel that's um, and it has a lot of opportunities this is this could be a, another trailhead. This is identified as another trailhead um, and utilizing the same concept that we are using at the Linden Road, which is one of one of the ramps um, on and off the levee would be would be paved and it would be ADA access to to the crown of the levee and the other ramp would remain gravel and um, remain same for access and maintenance. So some of the ultimate improvements here in the future is um, sh a shade structure, paid parking, picnic area, and benches. Again, uh, this is not included in this project, but I wanted to bring it to the attention that we are looking at these opportunities and, and identifying these areas right now. And again, here right off Village Parkway, this is a this is another identified area that can be uh, a large parking lot can be built here. We can have some benches, uh, another sh shade structure. Again, we're not able to provide any shade or any of those amenities on top of the crown of the levee. So this is an opportunity to, to have all those uh, amenities offsite um, and then being having access points for people to access this five point mile, this three miles of trail. And again, this is right here at Chicory Loop. Um, currently, we'll have the trail cross there and have a crosswalk. Um, the ultimate improvements here is just have some trash receptacle signage in, in this little area. It's not really wide enough to have parking um, right at this section. And Village Parkway um, at this location, it wouldn't it wouldn't fit uh, like a whole parking lot. So right now, it's just, that's what's proposed here. This is where there is um, significant opportunity. This is the start, I would say, I'd like to say the start of the, almost the trail from the city side, existing South River Road. Um, what's being proposed here is not a total parking lot since this area is, is will be redone um, later. 
So the ultimate, the ultimate improvements are to have a parking lot here, a paved parking lot here, but right now we will be putting, uh, we're looking into opportunity of putting a gravel parking lot here at the start of the trail and then having a uh, signage there uh, identifying the trail itself and um, maybe some public art for, for everyone to know that this is where they can access an access point. Um, the only park paved parking lot for this entire area will be at Linden Road. And that's where we'll be promoting more, um, which is about 30 parking spots. And then it also has an overflow parking. So kind of going over next steps and where we're at right now, um, we're at 35% plans in, in documents right, right now. Uh, and we're receiving uh, feedback from you today. Environmental clearance, um, that's our, our next steps into preventing uh, and to have um, uh, bid documents and permitting by November of 2023. So the construction also is scheduled. Um, we're planning on being in construction by 2024 uh, with the grant uh, agreement right now at 2025. Thank you, that concludes my presentation. And let me, I can't see any of you right now, so let me escape out of here so I can see <laughs> and open it up for any questions. Uh, well, thank you, Jay. That was a, a very thorough presentation. I like it. Um, I guess I'll, I'll open it up to uh, my fellow board members, see if they have any questions or comments. Um, yeah, if I may, uh, uh, Mr. Chair um, and uh, Jay and Tracy, um, first of all, thank you for all your work um, at the city uh, and, and furthering this. I know that this has been a huge priority for the city um, for some time, as you said, 2016, and and we worked. Um, I put on my city hat to to get the funding through Measure E and other things to help get this the, the funding for all this available. So uh, I just want to say thank you for all that work. And really, this is this is the first time I've been on Wasafco um, where I've been able to, to actually see the the partnership that occurs between the city and and not to say that. Um, everybody else in the city that supports Wasafka isn't part of it, but it's it's certainly understanding that the actual parks uh, program and the attention the intentionality of sort of working together on how to create the best trail system in the region using these natural assets we have while also maintaining uh, the integrity and the upkeep of our of our levy system, which is the RD nine hundred charter, and so. I really wanted to thank you all for for that partnership um, and uh, thank uh, the Wasafka staff and 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 Carol Ramos has been here this time to accepting that that kind of challenge of how do these how do we have two co-equal goals of maintaining make, making the natural assets an amenity to also maintaining the integrity and the and the and, and the safety of our of our residents and I'm I'm really proud this is my last Wasafka meeting so I can. Uh, that that I can tell that this is this is a true win for the community, and um, I'm super proud of the work uh, uh, that we've done on the city and and Wasafka has partnered uh, along with RD 900 to kind of see this come to fruition. So um, I, I just really am proud of this. Um, I am excited to see what what it was occur. Walk the levy. I don't know. I may, may not have supposed to have done that, but but I walked it. It is it is beautiful and it's a it is it's such a, a regional it'll be a regional draw a draw for our residents uh, from all over to come just enjoy the natural beauty that is our 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 waterfront. I, I, I do want to say on, on the on the kind of the, the headways we're making on Beast Lake and, and on the trailheads are the right ideas. And I, I think the question I have is um the, the reasons that we're not moving forward on the alternative two and some of the amenity amenities is strictly one of budgeting am i hearing that right from parks that it's just right at this point we're not so some of the uh wayfinding signage and additional uh bump outs um I think it's, it's, it's yeah, it, it's funding, but it's also it, it brings those additional amenities bring with them a lot of permitting. Mm -hmm. um, complexities mm -hmm. that create a little bit more uncertainty in the project schedule and the actual permitting 
And, um, and we, we do have a schedule that we need to be mindful of with the grant funding. So um, that doesn't preclude us from a later grant that might improve, like, you know, or later fundraising that might improve those things that um, we're working with through Wasapco, but with the city to find opportunities. And, 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 and I say that because it's part of the summer, um, uh, my wife and I spent in uh, North Lake Tahoe and went to the, I think Tracy probably heard me say this, went to the East Side Trail um, um, along Lake Tahoe from Incline down to um, Sand Harbor. And a lot of that was private fundraising they did um, as I researched it a little bit. But um, for, for what, from where my Wasafka had, I, I am... You know, we're not going to, you know, do anything obviously to 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 change or or hurt the integrity of our levy system and our flood flood protection is number one. And so, and I agree with the budgeting perspective you have that keep the timeline. But I, I think it's an amazing story to tell from both entities' perspective that. Uh, to promote the the nature natural beauty of these assets, but also this is important flood protection. And this agency has done an amazing amount of work um, the last 20 years, right, Tom? Like 20 years yeah. like, to, to, to tell the story of this little city that created this agency that is doing a billion dollar project for flood protection. And we've managed to do both. And I thought about that story that we could tell, and and again, it, it's it's a work in progress. We'll we'll have opportunities, and I'm I'll still be a resident here, so if I can private fund raise out. But I think that's a noble goal as we think about future improvements. We get this project done, and it'll be a beautiful thing. But how can we improve it? And I thought about how that trail and and um, on the east side told a story of how they were able to make improvements and showcase the, the lakefront. And we we have a similar story to tell um, with all the work that this the staff and previous uh, directors and council members have done to, to create flood protection for West Sacramento and educate the public on both. And so I'd ask the future, um, uh, my, my colleagues on the board and future board uh, to consider that because it is a great story. There's, it, you know, it's just not about um a, a city trying to you know again have great trails that's that is it but we are working very hard and we've worked very hard to create um uh, state-of-the-art flood protection and um that story needs to be told too and that's a, this is an opportunity to do it so again when uh, i i'm i'm excited about this i call it the first phase of of actually getting the trail but as you know as a as you know we move forward where residents or even the city or even with SAFCA and the, or RD 900 come into play is, is how do we continue um, to improve it in years, decades to come? And that's that's an opportunity. I think it's it remains an opportunity. So um, anyway, just super excited about it. Thank you all for the work on this. And and thanks to our staff at Wasafka uh, for uh, the partnership um, and I'm hoping that it continues. So Tom, this is Norma. And I, I also want yeah. to say, uh, great work with parks and with the flood control folks. Uh, it's a great marriage. I, I did have a few questions. Um, we do have quite a few folks with um, um, that that are equestrians, and um, they actually have them on. I have a friend who has um, uh, ponies. Um, why is it that we're not allowing uh, horses on on these um, on these trails? Who do you want to respond? Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be able to reference the, yeah. the, the, the right regulatory um, sections of whatever. Yeah, right now, I think just <laughs> on the top of the levy, um, and Paul, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong here, um, on, on the actual levy itself, um, from Army Corps, we were not allowed to have equestrians on any levy on top of the crown um, due to just wearing it down and, um, and those constraints. However, uh, at Linden Road, um, we did incorporate into the access road with RD900 um, that equestrians will be able to utilize that space 
um, is not necessarily on top of the levy, but we did offer we, have, we do have that opportunity and our our uh, are moving forward with that is having that equestrian staging area there. And then they are able to use the access roads that are not necessarily on top of the crown, um, but on the side. Okay, so it's only it's only for walking purposes, no motorbikes. Uh, are we allowing regular bikes? I'm sorry, I momentarily stepped away during some of the presentation. Yeah, so it will be a class one. It's 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 a class one bike trail, so it's going to be a um, available for bikes um, for mobility devices. It's under 100 pounds, so regular uh, mobility devices will be able to access the top of the trail uh, or top of the crown of the levee. Um, we're not, I mean, obviously ATVs and any, anything that will uh, of that sort won't be be able to go down there. And our stakeholder group that we met with, we worked really hard to make sure we had a broad representation of the, the different interests in the trail. So we had property owners, we invited property owners from every um, residential zone that Jay had highlighted along the trail that could be potentially impacted. We did have somebody who was representing the ADA community who has a mobility device, um, one that was actually very challenging for us to kind of work with to figure out how to provide the best access, but is representative of other people who have mobility devices. We had the equestrian community also engaged in the stakeholder group. And, and then we involved RD 900 as well to really, and our West Safeca staff, um, just to make sure that we were capturing a lot of the different interests. And um, we are looking at ways to have approved crossings for equestrians, if there's opportunities for them to cross the levee to go to other areas. But I think we're, we're at a place now with um, our equestrian community where we are providing amenities and access to certain areas, just not on the crown of the levee. Thank you, Tracy. And that, that was my, that was going to be my second question. I know a lot of people with disabilities have these, these um, um, like motor scooters or, you know, they, I, I don't know what you call them. There's another word for them. But anyway, they're, they're certainly over 100 pounds. So are they prohibited? Are we going to run into some problems there? Um, what was it? The boomer beast? Is that what we were calling that one mobility device, which kind of looked like a little ATV, but it was it was technically a mobility device. And we we do have to limit the types of mobility devices because the challenge is the, the bigger they are the wider the access point has to be, which then opens the door for a lot of other vehicles to get onto the levee. And that's what we really have to be mindful of. We've looked at controlled access gates. If, if it becomes a um, an issue where we are starting to see more and more mobility devices that aren't meeting the current criteria, we've talked about having some sort of a pre-registration access pass where if you need to use that mobility device, uh, on this particular trail, there could be a, a pre-qualification process that allows specific access, but we're not quite there yet. And we do have plenty of other areas where um, larger mobility devices can use trails. So, uh, but on this particular one, because it is a levy, it is a flood control feature. We do have to be mindful of the types of vehicles that can get up on the levy. And yeah, my, my only concern with that, and this is out for our council, is I would hate to have a lawsuit filed by the ADA community. You know, American Disabilities Act is, <clears throat> is very strong. And that's just something I, I'm sure you guys are mindful of and stuff. I just wanted to bring it up just in case anyone asks me later and I can have some response for them. <clears throat> Okay, and anything anything else, Norma? Nope, that's it. Okay, well, I'll make a few comments. Um, <clears throat> I mean, this the idea of recreational opportunities was, you know, always in the plan um, as far as a multi-benefit project down there. Uh, but, you know, I understand I've been around here long enough that it had to be kind of put in the background while we went through our process of getting permits and stuff to construct the levy itself. And so, uh, you know, there was uh, uh, some patience needed by the city of uh, Sacramento, or West Sacramento and Parks and Recreation and appreciate you guys uh, letting the project get completed and done and down the road, the uh, environmental
environmental stuff worked through and everything. And so, you know, now you're coming on and, and it looks like you're, you're, you're learning about flood control and uh, the Corps of Engineers and everything else and what, <laughs> what you can and can't do and, you know, where you can push and not. And, um, you know, I think what you have there now uh, uh, makes sense. Uh, and like Chris said, especially to get started and, and, and get it in place and going. Uh, future improvements, you know, we, we will see. I mean, that's going to be a combination of the state and the feds and everyone else, whether, uh, you know, additional improvements can come, can come in. And then also the reclamation district, whose uh, who's task now is to maintain that and do the patrols and everything. And I would assume that the paved uh, road is, is an improvement over what's there now. So, uh, you know, if um, I see Blake's on there, he can comment if he wants, but uh, it seems like that would be uh, uh, a benefit. Um, I, I see you went off uh, mute. Do you have any comments, Blake? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I met with Tracy and Jay on, on this uh, uh, several months ago, and, and we went through uh, some of the pluses and minuses, and it looks like, you know, a lot of that was incorporated. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm all for this multi-benefit uh, purpose of using the levees for biking and walking. It's a great idea. And, uh, um, yeah, operation maintenance changes a little bit, and we'll work that out as, as the time moves forward. But, uh in, in general, great idea, great plan um, as, as this moves forward. Okay, well, thank you. And then, uh, like I said, as, as far as additional improvements down the road, um, you know, there's there's been talk for years and years of re reform to the 408 permitting process and whether that ever uh, takes place. And, you know, there's the ability to uh, to do things without all that cost and time. You know, we'll we'll see, but I think what you have in place there now is going to be satisfactory. You know, this the city of Sacramento has got the same idea, and and they're not as far along as you guys are. So, uh, you know, congratulations and uh, continue on. So, uh, with that, thank you very much for the presentation. Thanks. Um, we'll Thanks. move on to uh, project updates. Paul, 5A. Five, five Thanks, Tom. Uh, Tom and members of the board, so here's a few project updates of kind of what's going on uh, in the overall program. Um, so I'll start with Southport. Um, our surveyor is uh, continuing to respond to comments that came from the Department of Water Resources Geomatics Unit. Um, once those once those corrections are all accepted, uh, the record of survey will be recorded, and then that will pave the way for um, conveying property rights back to the states um, and ultimately the San the Sacramento San Joaquin Drainage District, the holding entity for the state. Um, in terms of the trail, just kind of circle back on that. What we'll do is we'll. Um, West Safeco will be the underlying fee holder. And so there'll be a recreation easement back to parks. And as Blake brought up, um, there'll, be a, there'll be a maintenance agreement associated with that recreation easement um, so that Blake can do his work and parks can maintain the trail within their, uh, within their budgeting. Um, ben, back to Southport River Partners, our uh, restoration contractor, is wrapping things up for the year. The pumps have been pulled from the river. Um, I expect them to pull the lateral lines in the next week. And so the, the site will be buttoned up and, um, and we'll be uh, dancing for rain um, for the season. And we'll see them again in the spring sometime. Uh, moving up north to the Rivers Project. Um, the Rivers EIP is nearly complete and closed out. Um, Again, another record of surveys being updated to reflect the joint use agreement between the state and, uh, and uh, I'm not sure if it's West Safeco or RD900, but a, a joint use agreement you know, to maintain the levy over there and, uh, and the flood related easements. Um, further up north, um, survey work and geotechnical investigations are ongoing for Sac River West North Levy. Um, REY Engineering is completing their 3D surface model, uh, which will help to inform design. 
and the geotechnical investigations are ongoing in segment three. Uh, so we'll be completing those. Well, I'm not sure where we're going to complete them, but uh, we're going to be we're on the levy today and we'll be on the levy next week to complete the boring holes. We're going to 120 feet for geotechnical investigations. Um, segments one and two, all of that, um, all of the boring data has been collected and it's gone through most of the testing. It's going through uh, QC right now. And then once that's complete, um, it'll be sent over to the Army Corps of Engineers, and then they will be developing the geotechnical basis of design report um, that will, and so both the surveying and the geotechnical um, products are incorporated when they, uh, when that report comes together. In terms of the Yolo Bypass East Levy, um, there's been ongoing coordination between our staff and DWR um, to certify the real estate package. That's an important milestone for the Army Corps of Engineers to be able to move into the next, um, they do a, a feasibility analysis on the project design. It kind of takes into consideration the buildability, operability, maintenance, a number of things. It's a, um, so it gets, gets signed off by all the chiefs. Um, and then, Moving forward, then uh, we're hoping that the bid uh, to, uh, to bid out that project in 2023. Uh, definite date is not certain right now. It's looking like it's going to be sometime in the summer. Uh, lastly, with federal advocacy, um, we've been working with the, the District Army Corps of Engineers and our federal lobbyists to request. 2024 appropriations. We want to make sure that uh, we don't miss a year in terms of congressional appropriations. And although the core may not be able to spend all of the money that's been appropriated thus far, our emphasis here is really to not construct products and projects in serial, but to have more than one segment um, or more than one part of the Sac West Sacramento project either in design or investigation. Um, there's a couple of different areas which we're trying to determine um, if some of the work that we've already completed will meet the standards and not have to go through additional remediation. Um, so that's, the, that's our intent with, that, uh, with those asked, just to try to keep the, uh, our, our federal partners um, not just working on design in Sac River North, but also kind of looking at some of the other segments that may be quick fixes. A good example is the training dike, which um, up north by the by the notch, which really just requires a lot, you know, some more erosion control, some more rock placement. Um, so we don't we don't foresee that as being a as something that we can't do in parallel with some of the other projects that that will go into design. Uh, that concludes my my flood program update. If there's any questions. Okay, um, you know our 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 friends across the river, they got all their money at one time, and so we're just uh, if uh, we got to train uh, those folks that do the budget that uh, you know it, you got to you got to keep it fueled. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll be successful, and we you know let's let's get a little uh, little ex you know money now that we can uh, plan out it, the fish, most efficient way to operate. So hopefully that will that will happen. Uh, Norma, do you have any uh, any uh, questions or comments? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um, I guess uh, I am too. So um, our last item is director's comments, and uh, I'll make one. I see. You know, Chris had to leave early, but uh, just to note that uh, we. Have Appreciate his uh, his service on this board and to uh, RD 900, and I, I guess as a city council person for all these years as well. So, um, well, which Chris, uh, good luck in all the future endeavors, and obviously he'll be around uh, in town as well. So, thank you, Chris. And uh, any comment uh, from uh, the vice chair? 
No, I'm saving my comments for Chris for our next city council meeting. I was ready last night. <laughs> Chris says, no, I'm not going <laughs> Norma. So just wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Okay, well, uh, same here. So uh, with that, uh, we'll adjourn the meeting and thank you all for participating. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.